Hello lovely butterfly, welcome back, it's France. Today I wanted to talk crackles because they are amazing. They can look so distressed if they work. Here's a couple of secrets to never fail them. There is a plethora of crackle mediums out there and it can be pretty confusing. You can even make your own crackle medium. Now, I'm not a chemist, so I'm not going to start throwing complicated names around, but I do want to explain how crackle medium works. It actually plays on a glitch in the drying process. It is based on the difference in drying times between several components. So they start to shift on one another and to retract, which will leave you with cracks. So it is based on a glitch, which means you cannot control it. But we can help. These are both crackle glazes. And that is where it starts to be confusing. Because the one on the right, if you start looking at the description, says that it's a top layer. So it's a finishing layer. While the one on the left says that it has to go in between two layers of paint. That means that one contains both the components to create that glitch happening, while the other one only has the one. And then you have to combine it so that you have that glitch happening. Then you also have like things like crackle paint and crackle paints, which are actually the same thing. They're just a difference in thickness. And then here we have two crackle glazes, but the one is a one step, so it contains both components, while the other one is a two step. It has to go in between two layers. And you can actually see the difference. The one on the left contains both components and the one on the right is the one that has to go in between the two layers of paint so that that glitch can happen. So it's really important to go and read the description of the products that you have if you don't manage to create nice crackles. And then from one brand to another, it very often looks alike. This is again a crackle glaze. So it's the same thing. It only has one of the two components, but there might be little differences like thickness and stickiness, but in the end, you will have the same kind of result. Maybe with some little differences in size of crackles or easiness to use because of the difference in ratio between binder and filler. But in the end, it doesn't really matter which product you have. You have to use it in the right way and then you will get nice crackles. So let's get started by prepping some backgrounds. And I'm just uh, covering some watercolor paper using Fresco Finish chalk paint, just because I like them and just because I like the colors and just because I like the coverage. Um, but it could be a regular acrylic paint that doesn't change the effect of the crackle medium. At this stage, I can still use my heat gun to make sure that everything is completely dry. And now I can start playing with the crackle mediums. I'm going to show you three different kinds of uh, the crackle mediums and each one has a different color of background. The first one is the crackle paint. I prefer the crackle paint to the crackle paste because it's slightly more fluent and easier to apply. The second one is the crackle glaze. And then the very first one is the crackle glaze from Deco Art Medium. So that one is the top layer, while the one in the middle is the one that has to go in between. I'm going to start with the first one because that's a one step thing. So I can just apply it and then I'm done. This one contains all the components needed to have that glitch effect going. I could apply it just like that on the paper. I don't even need um, paint underneath it. It can just um, be applied as such or I can colorize it. Now, when you colorize a crackle medium, you have to be careful because you are altering the ratio binder and filler. And if you alter it too much, that glitch um, that creates the crackles won't happen anymore. So I'm adding a tiny bit of acrylic paint. This is a chalky paint. And as you can see, it's just a little bit, just to make sure that I will still have crackles happening when it starts to dry. And to add a little bit of interest, I'm going to apply it over a stencil and to make it easier on myself, I'm using some masking tape um, to keep my circle in place. 
The thing with these kind of mediums is not to play around too much when you apply it. So I'm already starting by giving a very bad example because my palette knife is so dirty that I'm having a hard time to apply it in a regular layer so that you can really see the crackles. And I'm trying to create um, a thinner layer on the right going to a thicker layer on the left, which is so much easier with a clean palette knife. But it took a moment for my brain to kickstart and to realize that this would be so much easier with a clean palette knife. So if you want to have a um, better chance at better cracks, don't play around for too long with these kind of mediums. Apply them and then leave it be. Because all the time that you keep playing around with that top layer, you're actually already disturbing that shifting that starts to happen as soon as the product starts to dry. And if you alter that glitch, then well, you alter the cracks that you could have. So if I wanted to kill the cracks completely, I would now go in with my heat gun because that means that I would completely get the products stuck on one another without that retracting even happening. They would just stick to one another and stay like that. So this has to dry by itself and that will give me the best cracks. So for the second one, uh, I need a second layer of acrylic paint after applying my crackle glaze. And this one is best applied with a palette knife. This personally is my favorite. This is the crackle glaze from Paper Artsy. So just applying a very thin layer using a palette knife and this one you can even heat set. So you can dry it with your heat gun. It is one of the very few crackle mediums that you can heat set. This is not the one that will be crackling. It will be the paint that we put on top. But nonetheless, if we can win some time by heat setting it, well, I'm game. But as we still have this last crackle glaze to apply, and this one has to dry by itself, uh, I'm going to let the paper artsy one dry by itself for a moment too. So this one is a one-step crackle. And as you can see, there's already a slight difference. It's not as translucent as the other glaze that I showed at the beginning when we compared the one-step with the two-step. This is a one-step. It's a top layer. So it has this walky, this walky, this wide-ish touch to it too. And I'm taking it away from the table to make sure that the two other pieces of uh, paper don't get disrupted by the heat so that that crackle process can uh, keep on going. So I started with the mushroom paint, I applied the Paper Artsy glaze and now I'm going to apply a contrasting color of paint on top of it and that is the one that will crackle. I'm going to apply it on one side with a sponge and on the other side with a paintbrush because the thickness of the layer in paint will determine the size of my crackles and also the direction in which I apply the paint will determine the, the direction of um, the crackles as well. So first some sponging. That is my favorite technique. So you have to make sure to not overload your sponge yet you do need enough paint because you cannot go back and forth. Like I said it's a shifting of layer. This is a very thin layer, so it starts to crackle almost immediately because it starts to shift almost immediately because it starts to dry almost immediately. So if you go back and forth, you disrupt that shifting. So you have to let it be. Now the other side with my paintbrush at the top, I'm just going downwards and it's already a bit thicker than what I did with the sponge. And then at the bottom, I'm going to do a crisscross. Because the layers are so thin, they're already completely, well, almost completely crackled. And you can see there's several things going on on that one piece of paper. On the left, we have very delicate, very light kind of crackles, while on the right, you can see that the 
Crackles are following the direction of the paintbrush and they're bigger because I have a thicker layer of paint. Where I have a thicker layer of paint on the left, it's not completely crackled yet. So that is still in progress. I could speed it up now going in with my heat gun because the layers are already shifting. But I jumped forward to this because showing you how to distress this properly is way more important than showing you how it crackles in the end. So this is a very gentle sanding block that you can use to distress um, the paint even more. And this is something that I've never managed to do in such an easy way as you can manage it with uh, the Paper Artsy Crackle system. So this finish for me is the perfect kind of crackles. But they're not the only one. So back to our DecoArt Medium Crackle Glaze, which is the uh, one-step crackle system that you can put on top of your project. So I need to do something to make those crackles visible because now I can only see the plum paint that I have underneath. So I'm going back in with a lighter shade. Now there's special paints to do this. There is like the antiquing cream from DecoArt and I'm sure there's another plethora of products out there that you can use to do that. But you can also just do it with regular paint and chalky is easier to do that because it will allow you to remove it in an easier way. So I'm pushing it into the cracks that are uh, present at this stage, which you cannot see at all. This is what I like to call the invisible stage. Don't let your paint dry too much because you won't be able to lift it anymore. So I'm going in with a baby wipe and slightly rubbing the paint away. Depending on how dry your paint is, you will have to give it a bit more of an effort or not. And this is how it looks when you're done rubbing. It does look scrumptious, it's very delicate, it's almost eggshell-like, and that's the description they use on the jar, by the way. So let's go back to the first one we applied, which you have nothing left to do because it just crackles by itself. You just have to admire and look at it. And you can see there's a difference on the right where I applied a layer very thin and on the left where I applied in a bit of a thicker way. So it's a very fun way to add uh, interest to your project as well. So the first thing to do to make nice cracks is to actually read the instructions on the products that you have because they will tell you a lot. They will let you know if you have a top layer or a two-step product. The second thing is to keep in mind that you're actually basing yourself on a glitch. So there is no way to control that. The third thing is to keep in mind that it's about layers shifting on top of one another. So let them shift, give them a chance to shift as good as they can. There is one thing, one last thing that can influence the quality of your cracks and that's the weather condition. And as you have no control over those, well, there's no point in mentioning them. That's it for today's video. So thank you so much for joining me again. Don't forget to hit like if you liked today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses.